The Daily News Online presents Inside High School Sports. Brought to you by Tonawanda Valley Federal Credit Union. With your host, Alex Braski and Nate Ryder. Hello, everybody, and welcome to yet another episode of Inside High School Sports. My name is Alex Brasky, alongside Nate Ryder of the Batavia Daily News. Uh, this episode, once again, is brought to you by Tonawana Valley Federal Credit Union. Of course, at TVFCU, we know members love our low loan rates and our low account fees, but our expert staff is really what everybody raves about. If you are not a member, consider joining and learn why our TVFCU members are considered friends, family, and fans. New members are always welcome. Stop in at 10 Jefferson Square. That's behind Wendy's in Batavia. All right, Nate, back to it again. Another jam-packed show. You missed last week. Uh, it's been difficult for us to kind of get our schedules on the same page with this whole uh, state of things that we're in right now. But we're back together this week, here to bring you yet another, like I said, a jam-packed episode. Uh, beginning, Nate, with the Alexander softball team. I mean, their video, their Section 5 softball challenge really took off at the beginning of this week, and rightfully so. I mean, the creativity shown by those girls in that video was second to none. We had someone riding a horse, standing up on a horse, someone taking a ground ball on the roof. I mean, it was just... The whole girl was sleeping in the driveway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was incredible. Yeah. And uh, Coach Dan Prong uh, floated the idea to his girls, and, and he really says that they just kind of took, it, took it and ran with it. Yeah, I mean, they got to be bored, so... You know, they all kind of had their own twist on it. I think it was kind of... You know, what they're doing personally, you know, one's in the hay barn, you know, one's yep. riding a horse, the one's sleeping. I don't know. That'd be cold jumping in that water. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I mean, you got to try to have fun with this at this time. I don't remember where that started. I want to say Victor, maybe. No, I, I believe it was Rush, Rush Henrietta. Henrietta. And, that, and then Waterloo really took it and made it their own, and then it really took off with yeah, Alexander. And I've seen a couple after that, and they haven't been as good as the Alexander one. I think that one really... Really kind of takes the cake for it, but you know, good for them for trying to have a little fun doing this. Yeah, and uh, we had Coach Prong and a couple of his girls stop in, and you'll see what we're talking about. We'll give you the highlights here during our interview with Coach Prong and his ladies. On Saturday afternoon, I uh, saw on the Section Five softball Twitter feed, uh, Lynn Ritola, the Rush Henrietta coach, uh, posted a video of her team doing a similar video, kind of issued a challenge uh, that had started with Waterloo softball. So I sent the link to our girls and said, Who, who's in? Uh, and it's, what, within 15 minutes, the girls had already started to shoot out ideas. Uh, it was really fun seeing all the videos roll into the group chat of all the girls. They Each video really represented each of us. And um, getting around, uh, being really upset about the season, it brought us together. And it was really uplifting for all of us. Yeah, everybody's got a big personality on the team. And uh, the first thing I could think of, like craziest thing I could think of, was going on the roof. I mean, my roof's not that high, but I mean, it looks pretty cool, I think. So uh, and Courtney, obviously, on the horse, that's like one of her big things that she likes doing, too, uh, besides from softball, is riding horses. So yeah, she's a big trick rider and stuff, so she, she thought it would be pretty cool. Uh, a little bit of a twist on it and stuff, so something different. Um, I've seen a couple of these videos on TikTok so that kind of like helped me with the editing process but it was kind of my first time putting a full video together but it was really fun. It was definitely a fun time creating every like putting the videos all together and seeing each person's video come in as well as like giving me something to do while just sitting at home it definitely helped with that and uh, we use the song center field as our background song because we listen to that before every game everyone's just ideas kept like coming through and we're like yeah do that and then they're telling me to jump in the creek and i'm like yeah easier said than done but it was just like um i don't know i thought it was really fun to see everyone's like input on what everyone should do um i don't know i just ran up the hill and took a shower because it was freezing so Oh, it was, it's a great feeling. I, I haven't laughed this much since, uh, you know, being together as a team. I mean, together as a team, we were only together for a week, you know, officially. Um, but you, you know the girls, and uh, they're a lot of fun. They're a riot. And, and watching, you know, it's watching the text messages come through and watching their brains work and how each person's personality comes through, their hobbies and their talents away from softball. 
come out and uh, seeing the girls kind of bring that out of each other was just it was a really special feeling um, to see that play out. It's really important for us because our team, we do have some big expectations for each other. We do have big goals, like we do want to win sectionals this year, and um, we all really rely on each other. So it's, it was really nice to come together, even though we couldn't really come together. Yeah, I mean, those girls were really excited about it, and it was just a lot of fun uh, picking their brains on, on what really went into creating such a creative video. Uh, but moving right along, uh, we also had Coach Dan Dickens of the Calmon Boys basketball team here in studio. Uh, his team received some bad news this week. Their season officially over. The New York State Public High School Athletic Association officially cancels the winter championships after uh, the Class E crossover game, so before the Far West Regional. But Coach Dickens said that he kind of knew that this was coming along and, and he kind of anticipated this and He's still proud of his guys for what they accomplished and trying to stay positive. He says, hey, we, we finished the season with a win. Yeah, you know, along with them is, is Elba and Pembroke girls as well. But, yeah, I talked to Dan. A lot, along with the Dansville girls. Yes, and the Dansville girls. And, you know, I talked to Dan a little bit. And, he, yeah, he's disappointed because he thought his team was, you know, doing what they're supposed to do, playing their best at the right time. And they beat a Marcus Whitman team that beat them earlier in the year. They beat a very talented Lions team. And, they thought they had as good a chance as any to beat Middle Early College and get all the way and, and get to the Final Four where no Cal Mom team has been before. And You know, for Coach Dickens, it's even a double hit right now because, you know, he was looking to rebound from kind of a, a down softball year last yeah. year and, and get back to where they're used to be, and now they're on, on pause. So, yeah, it's been tough for all these kids, and it, it's been tough for especially the seniors who aren't going to be able to – to what looks like be able to finish out their career. So here's Coach Dickens talking on how he's still trying to keep that connection with his players. Uh, Coach, your team was set to play in the Far West Regional, regional against Middle Early College. Uh, when you got when you found out, I mean, I'm sure you knew this was kind of coming along the pike. But how tough was it uh, when when it was official? I've talked with a handful of them, um, but you know they're they're. They're upset. Yeah. On, on Wednesday, we beat Lions. You know, everybody's excited. I mean, it's the first time since 1979 that we'll be um, representing Section 5 in the uh, state tournament. So that was exciting. You know, then Thursday morning, we hear that we're going to play the game in front of no fans, which would have been different, unique. I mean, still having the opportunity to play. And then Thursday at about I don't, a little after three, we were in an emergency faculty meeting. Obviously, most schools, I'm sure, were. And, you know, I just happened to look at my uh, email, and I saw that they had postponed. Maybe 3.45, I show up at practice. My assistants were running it because I had the meeting. And, um, you know, I told them. I mean, they, I think they kind of realized that was a possibility. When they, when they said they were going to come out with the announcement Monday, and there's really been no progress, it's all been basically going downhill with the news. I kind of figured to finally hear it be canceled. I mean, it, it's tough, it's disappointing. Uh, I reached out to all my guys this morning and, and sent them a message. Um, you know, we're still, we still haven't had closure on the season yeah. really as a group. Tonawanda Valley Federal Credit Union, we have members of all types. From Blue Devils to Knights to Dragons and Leprechauns, we have solutions for all their financial needs. We not only provide checking and savings accounts, but also loans for vehicles and student loans. Our members also enjoy exclusive benefits through our scorecard rewards programs. To become a member, you can stop by our office in downtown Batavia or give us a call. Tonawanda Valley Federal Credit Union local personal and owned by members now tell us uh tell us about the difference in in the perspective from uh from basketball to softball like you like you hinted at with the basketball team uh you've realized that the, the season's canceled you, you've reached that whatever conclusion but with softball there's still that hope our jv coach had been running softball and you know that gave me some you know excitement thinking about all these these girls coming back i mean we had a an atypical year for us last year i know they're yep. hungry um, to get better and you know we do have a lot of young talent a lot of girls returning so you know that that kind of turned me around a little bit more to be like a little bit more positive because you know that's that's what you're looking for in a situation <laughs> like that like you know I'm trying to put the guys in a positive way yeah. but you know you know even as an adult you need some things to to help cheer you up a little bit so, you know cautiously optimistic I mean you know it's something that our superintendents always saying is you know, hope for the best and, you know, prepare for the worst. It's that 15 days they've been talking about quite a bit. I mean, I think we're going to learn more then. Yep. Um, I saw that 
the state's going to make a announcement. It was like April 27th on the state tournament. Correct. Either, either on April 27th or before, they said. Which, I mean, regardless, we're going to be behind schedule. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'd be shocked if they allowed the, you know a state tournament to go yes. on in that. I think it'd be better to get more games and opportunities for your for your kids to play and then have a sectional tournament mm-hmm. like the, like it used to be you know just trying to remind the girls to, to just try to find something to, to do at home I mean a bunch of them do have some nets they're hitting into and stuff I mean obviously we're not encouraging them to go do some practices with each other because that's not going to help the situation how difficult do you think it is for them and in, in talking with them how difficult has it been for them the basketball guys realizing that their basketball career is over and the softball girls realizing that they may not have a senior season yeah having 10 seniors is tough I mean for the boys basketball that's uh been a group that's been through a lot not just them their parents as well as the parents are giving up a lot of things in the summer and most of them are three sport athletes, so there's no time to take family vacations during the, the school years. That's tough, but the girls now, I mean, I have three seniors, um, Grace, Bree Ranowitz, and Shauna Fioko, and you know, they're looking to end, end their school, school careers on a, on a positive note. It's been a little rough going for our uh, girls this, this year. It's not been you know, lack of effort, it's just, you know, it's just what it is. But I really, really was excited for the softball, I thought. You know, we have a lot of girls returning starters, and um, I thought we could have been a very dangerous team this year. Again, I'm holding out hope, but, you know, we also have to be realistic and practical here to, to, as well and, you know, understand that, you know, last year when we lost in the, in the sectionals, that, that might have been the last time these girls get to play in high school. All right, once again, this broadcast brought to you by Tonawana Valley Federal Credit Union. There is not a better time to leap into a new home or spruce up your current home. TVFCU is waiving the application fee on all mortgages and home improvement loans. This offer ends March 31st, so not a lot of time left, Nate. So get right out there and and make sure you give Tonawana Valley Federal Credit Union a call. Rates change weekly. Call 585-343-5627 to schedule your appointment and let the leaping and sprucing begin. I guess you're going to need a new read next week. Right? Yeah, yeah, we're going to have to we're going to have to update our ad read here, but uh, something else that needs updating, Nate, is the Fab 5 boys and girls basketball teams. It's that time of year once again right here. Last year's ball with all last year's uh, members. We got Brianna Smith, Ryan Stefaniak, Mason McFollins, Callie McCulley, Ryan Davis, Vin Molisani, Gabe McDonald. We had Coach Dan Dickens, Coach of the Year, Jenna Lemaire from Wheatland Chilai, Leah Bizon from Elba, and then Coach Schlagenoff. Should be on there somewhere. From uh, Oakfield as Girls Coach of the Year. And we also had John Boyce from Elba. So a talented list. Uh, we had some girls that were on that team and some guys return this year for play. So. Definitely in the running, but let's get right down to it, Nate. It's time to announce our Fab Five boys basketball team, beginning with our Coach of the Year, Dan Dickens from Calmum. Back-to-back championships, back-to-back Coach of the Year. Yeah, you know, it's tough not to choose Coach Dickens because of, of what he did and what he did with that team and what he's done with that program. You know, it was kind of a... It was a tough choice because, you know, we talked about Ryan Steller from Oakfield as well and the job he did with that team this year. And, you know, maybe if they would have gotten that hump and got over to the finals, but, you know, he was also the, the Class C, C3 Coach of the Year this year as well. So it was tough. It, it's a tough choice. But, you know, for, for Coach Dickens to have that team where they were when the season ended, you know, it's a, it's a job well done and he deserves it. Yeah, so congratulations to Coach Dickens, like Nate said. Well-deserved. Coach Dickens puts in a lot of work in the off season, and uh, really has a great relationship with all of his players, and it really shows on the court with all the success that his program has experienced over the last five-plus years. Uh, but moving on to the actual team, uh, the, at least the players anyway, and the first one we'll announce, Nate, drum roll. Gabe McDonald of Notre Dame, back-to-back Fab Five selections. He was also on the Fab Five team last year, as I said, a name on the ball. Uh, Gabe, 17.6 points per game, 10.7 rebounds, 5.4 assists, and 2.1 steals. So kind of a do-it-all kid uh, is Gabe. Yeah, I mean, he was their – I mean, obviously they had some talent on that team, but he was the guy that that kind of made everything work for them. And, you know, he he had – 
I don't remember, I think 13 double-doubles, I think he had three triple-doubles. You know, he, he was a kid who, who handled the ball, he rebounded, he, he wasn't much of an outside shooter, he didn't shoot many threes, but he would jump over people and, and you know, he's getting rebounds over people, you know, inches taller than he was. And like I said, he was asked to do pretty much everything for that team at different points of the year. And he, he I mean, he upped it from what he did last year to this year. And, you know, it, it really wasn't his fault that they didn't get to where they wanted to be. He really had an exceptional season and, and a great two years. You know, I know he was up as a sophomore, but great two years back to back for Notre Dame. So congratulations to Gabe. Uh, quite the senior year for him. Leads the Notre Dame football team to a sectional championship and then leads Notre Dame boys basketball to a rather successful year. So congrats to him. And moving on to our next selection, right down the road, Nate, Batavia High School, junior Zach Gilbarto. First time on the Fab Five team. But what a year he had against some top-notch competition. Uh, one of his best games of the year, 27-point performance against Pittsburgh Menden, a win for the Blue Devils, one, uh, perhaps their biggest of the season. Uh, and he finished the season with an average of 18.5 points per game and four assists per game, so also a distributor from the point guard position. Yeah, and we talked about this. I mean, that kid, to me, came out of nowhere. You know, I don't really – I know he played a little bit last year, but, I mean, he wasn't really much of a contributor. and. And it definitely showed without him how that team sunk down a level. He was the thing that that kept that team going both offensively and defensively. And, you know, from what I've heard and, and from what your father told me, you know, this is a kid who's endlessly working, just working constantly in the gym. I saw a video of him on Twitter getting up shots yeah. yesterday. He was yeah. shooting around some garbage cans, you know. So the, the kid never stops. And, yeah, you mentioned that Pittsburgh Menden game. I was at that game. Yeah. And, you know, he outplayed, uh, I think it's Jake Jacob Shatters. Jacob Shatters. Yeah. And, and that kid's supposed to be one of the top point guards in Section 5, and, and Gil Barto outplayed him the whole game. And it was impressive, and the kid's a dynamic shooter. He's a dynamic scorer, playmaker, and like I said, he defends because if he doesn't defend, he's not going to be playing much for your father. So <laughs> good for him. Yeah, and I, I think he answered your own question there. You said he kind of came out of nowhere. And uh, it's, it's definitely just because of his relentless work ethic, the time that he's willing to put in, and it, uh, it shined through this year, and we expect an even better season for him next year. But also, like Nate alluded to, he did miss some time due to injury this year, so uh, we, we hope for him to have a fully healthy senior season. Uh, moving right along, right down the road, uh, uh, what is it, Route, Route 63, I think, Nate? Uh, right, yes, right, right out there in, in little old Oakfield, New York. Joey Burdick. Uh, a great career for Joey Burdick, senior uh, for the Hornets, selected to this year's Fab Five boys basketball team. Finished his career, Nate, just shy of 1,000 points, 933 career points for Burdick. Uh, but I think his best performance of the season came at that semifinal game against York at Genesee Community College. Just an incredible performance in that game. Yeah, he had, he had a couple 30-point games this year. I think they were back-to-back. It might have been even three back-to-back in a row. Um, but you're right, yeah, against York. He almost single-handedly won that game for Oakfield, at least on the offensive end. He scored in the 20s in the second half. And, you know, he really showed the dynamic player that he is. The only reason he didn't get to a thousand points is because he's unselfish, mm-hmm. you know. And I, I, I talk with Ryan Steller all the time about him because he's been there forever. He's been there for I think five years. Yep. He's been on varsity, and you know he he sometimes has to push him to be a little more selfish sometimes. And but that's kind of the way Oakfield is. That's why his numbers aren't higher because it's such a well-rounded team and, and it's so balanced with everybody on there that they're all doing, you know, equal parts, and and no one's taken too much of the reins of everything but you know if there was one he was the one who was going to do it and you could always tell when he was on how tough that team was and you're absolutely spot on with the unselfishness but don't let that take away from his competitive edge no and and you saw that down the stretch of that york game when when it's winning time and when he has to step up or when he had to step up, I should say. He, he did time and again. Uh, he was the catalyst for that program, I think, at least the last two years, maybe even the last three years. Uh, but just an incredible career for him, and congratulations selected to this year's Fab Five boys basketball team. Uh, but last but not least, and you might be thinking, wait, there's two left. 
But yes, this year we have co-players of the year on the boys' basketball side. Colton Dillon of Elba and Vin Malasani of Cal Mum. Colton Dillon, 26 points per game and 14 rebounds per game this season. A monster year for Colton Dillon. Uh, ended as Elba's all-time leading scorer, uh, but as did Molisani. That's what made it so difficult. He's Cal Mum's all-time leading scorer now. 22 points per game, 6.2 rebounds per game, and led that team to a sectional championship. Yeah, we argued about this a little bit, and you know, you, it was really just too hard to choose between the two of them, you know, because they're they're both dynamic and can take over a game, but kind of do it in different ways. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, from from what Dylan has done, you know, he's done his in the past two years for the most part. You know, he's really built that game. Vinny's been there a while, and it, this has all been building, and you know, and they both had spectacular years this year, so. You know, you, you look at Vinny and, and them getting as far as they did. And, I mean, even though Elba lost to Prattsburg, I think Dylan had 36 points in that game. It's just everybody else kind of struggled around him, and he was in foul trouble. But, yeah, to, for both of these guys to, to get where they are, I mean, obviously there's hard work. And I've talked to – obviously I've talked to Elba coach Chachi Zambito a lot about Dylan over the past couple of years. And he said all the young kids love him, the little kids love him. He – you know, he'll stay and work out with the little kids, and he just really has become kind of that face of the program that you want because, you know, a lot of times he says, you know, your best player is going to be the first one, the last one in and the first one out. Well, yeah. Dylan's usually the first one there and the last one to leave. Mm-hmm. So and he said, he, he, you know, he's just a, he's, he's a real soft-spoken kid, and, you know, it's good to see him succeed as much as he did. And obviously over the past few years, We've talked. Both of us have talked to Dan Dickens about yeah. about Vin Malasani, and he says he's probably the smartest kid he's ever seen on a basketball yeah. court. So, you know, obviously, just talented players, and you know, you can't say enough about them. Yeah. So, congratulations to our Fab Five boys basketball team and our co-players of the year and our coach of the year. Uh, but moving on to the girls' side, Nate, beginning in Byron Bergen, Juliana Amesbury. 22.4 points per game this season, eclipsed the 1,000-point mark for her career, six rebounds per game, 3.6 steals per game, and two assists per game as well. Uh, and the Bees bowed out just before the sectional final game, lost to a tough, gritty Letchworth team, uh, but they had an incredible season led by a group of seniors that Coach Rich Krasinski is really going to have a tough time saying goodbye to. And Julian Amesbury, he's probably at the top of that list. Yeah, you know, she did a lot of things for that team. And, you know, she wasn't the primary ball handler, but when it came down to crunch time, it was. You know, she was she was always the main look kind of offensively, but she would she would do more. I mean, she was a shoot. She was a quality outside shooter. She would, she would sneak away on the fast break. She could drive to the bucket. You know, and she rebounded, you know, and the, the girl was gritty. Every game I saw of them, she was on the floor. She's doing everything she can for that team. And, you know, it is kind of a shame for, for Coach Krasinski and and them to bow out the way they did. I know they didn't expect to that way, and they kind of ran into a team that got hot at the right a time. A buzzsaw with every <laughs> definition of the word. But, you know, you look at it, it, where Byron Burgeon was, a lot of that had to do with Amesbury. I mean, I think their second leading scorer – was only around 10 points a game. And, it, and of course, it's not all about points, but, you know, she did do everything. And, you know, she had over 500 points this season alone. And, you know, she was Rick's go-to guy, go-to girl, I should say. All right, so congratulations to Juliana Amesbury. And congratulations to her for eclipsing that 1,000-point mark. I know that's very important to high school basketball players. But moving along, another 1,000-point scorer and another – player who leads her entire uh, program in, in points. That's Brianna Smith of Oakfield, Alabama. So uh, just a great career for Brianna. I, I mean, it, I, I sound like a broken record, just a great career, but that's what you get here at the Fab Five girls and boys basketball teams. This is the best of the best, the cream of the crop, and Brianna Smith is just that. 15.2 points per game this year, 10 rebounds per game, 2.4 assists, 2.3 steals, and two blocks, and was the only senior for Coach Slaganoff in that team. So she had to take on the full brunt of the leadership role as well. And she did a great job absorbing a key loss 
of their starting point guard, Danica Porter. She did, she did a great job keeping that team together and, and, and making sure they had a successful season. You know, and the, the thing with her is you got to remember is once you lose your starting point guard, things kind of get really scrambled, but other teams look at you and go, okay, now we can double team her. Now mm -hmm. we can triple team her. So she did all this being every team's focal point defensively and, you know, she was on the team last year and when they got to the, or they won the sectional title and, you know, they, they probably would have had a better chance this year, but it, it wasn't because of her play because, you know, she she's one of the more dominant, you know, small school girls players you're going to see. And, you know, despite just, you know, being as tall and, and, and big as she is, she's also a ball handler. She could shoot from the outside. So, you know, she did a little everything. And, you know, I've talked to Coach Laganoff about her and, you know, at the beginning of the year, they he kind of put all this on her shoulders, and she knew it, and she kind of ran with it, and, you know, she did the best she could, and, and you watch her out there, man, she she just, she's a battler, she's a worker, and that's, that's what got her to where she was. So congratulations to Brianna, not only on her selection, but a fantastic career there for the Hornets. Uh, next up, we have right down the road, Bryn Walzak of Elba. Led the Lancers their fourth straight sectional title, 16.9 points per game, 5.7 rebounds, 2.5 steals, and 2.4 assists. Walzak was really the catalyst for that offense uh, down there in Elba. Uh, you give her the ball, and there's not many girls that can stop her going to the basket. And, and she really was able to score it well almost in every single one of their games this season. And a team that has so many weapons, you still need that one player at certain times where you need a bucket. And Bryn Walzak was that player for Coach Redbane and his team. Yeah, especially, you know, with Maddie Muley coming off the knee surgery. And, you know, and they still had Leah Bizon and, and Taylor Argello and, and the Lauren Engel, who was the, the three-point shooter. And that's one thing Walzak kind of brought into her game this year, too, is she added that three-point shot. But... You're right. I, you know, so many games I saw this year. Some of them were blowouts, but there were some games where, you know, especially against Notre Dame and against Oakfield, when they needed a bucket, they went to Walzak, and she would make something work underneath, and she just had a way of, of getting there. She's not the biggest. She's not the mm -hmm. tallest. She's not the fastest, but, you know, she she definitely kind of rose above everybody else on that team just a little bit this year to to that, that next level, and it, which is probably good for them because now they're all going to want to reach that level to where she got this year, and, you know, they're, they're one of them. Like, who knows, you know, what would have happened with them. Yeah. You know, and, and it, you know, watching her, even against Pavilion and Pavilion's size in that, in that qualifier game, she didn't have any fear. She'd go in there and get blocked twice, and then yeah. she'd go in and make, you know, she'd go in there and make one and – you know, she just she's one of those who's really upped her game the last few years, so good for her. So congratulations to Bryn, uh, second straight year with an elbow player in our Fab Five. Uh, another sectional championship team uh, got another got a player on this year's Fab Five team, Serene Calderon of Pembroke, 13.6 points per game, 6.6 .6 rebounds per game, 3.8 steals per game, and 3.7 assists per game. But I think really what put Serene over the edge was her performance in that game against Keshaqua. Uh, that game in, in the Class C crossover game without Dakari Moss, who was a sectional uh, finals MVP, she was out due to illness, I believe, and Calderon just took over that game. She, clo she scored close to 30 points. Uh, she did it all for them defensively. I believe she even took a couple charges. I mean, she was really the, the straw that stirred the drink <laughs> for this Pembroke team who won back-to-back -back championships. And uh, like a broken record we are, that's another team who, who knows what would have happened if the season was able to continue. But nonetheless, a great season for Serene Calderon. And she's only a junior. She's got another year left. Yeah, she showed everything this year a little bit. You know, that's another team, kind of like we mentioned with – with Elba and, and also the Oakfield boys, they were really balanced between Moss and, and her and Peters and Wirtz and, and some of those other girls. So the, the numbers aren't going to stand out to you, but you're right. In, in that game against Keshqua, she took over, and there are a number of other games this year that I saw where when she wanted to take over, she could take over a game. And that's kind of, that's kind of what put her above some of the other players. It's just her ability to take over a game when she had to and, you know, I know she did it against Elba in the win, 
um, early in the year, and she did it against Oakfield when I saw her. So, yeah, you know, 13 points doesn't sound like a lot, but when you're when you're spreading the ball around so mm-hmm. much and you're winning, sometimes you're winning by so much, so the numbers aren't going to be high. But yeah, she she was she was an impressive player, and like you said, another year to go. So hopefully we see her again next year. So congratulations to Serene. Now, the moment everyone's all been waiting for, the Player of the Year from Wheatland Chilai, Jenna Lemaire. 23 points per game, 9 rebounds, and 3 assists per game. So, I mean, she did it all for this team. And when I say team, (laughs) it's as small of a team as you're going to find. Six players on this team, and really Jenna Lemaire was was one of their players that just really was forced to do everything. Uh, they, they all kind of had to chip in all over the court, play a ton of minutes, and what she was able to do with uh, leading the Genesee region, I believe, in points per game uh, and, and, and following that up with nine rebounds and three assists per game, just an all-around effort from Jenna this year, two-time uh, Fab Five player now. She's another one that's been around forever. You know, and they, they I know Coach Ward kind of built that program around her, and that's, I think she's the main reason they can ha- only have six players yeah. on that team is, is someone like that. And, you know, I know Lindsey Clare was a, a great ball handler. She was a scorer as well, but other teams focus on Jenna Lemaire, and, you know, she, you're, you're right. She could do it all, She and she's done it all for a number of years. Um, she was a Genesee Region League Player of the Year. I don't think anybody argued with that. You know, and if you watch her, she's usually, if not always, the best player on the floor. I know their season came to an early end, kind of surprising. I don't remember who they lost to, but um, you know, like you said, they, they, to carry a team with only six players, and you know, and that means she's playing you know, pretty much 30, the whole. She, game. She's playing thirty-two minutes a game, yeah. pretty much. You know, unless they're up by a ton. So you know, that, and, and I remember talking to them and all the work that goes into to how they play with only six players and you know she's someone they kind of built around and they kind of built up everything that they're looking to do with that program so she's been there I think four or five years and you know she didn't get the send off but I know she's going to play in college so she's a she's a talented player and she'll be missed in the league. So congratulations to Jenna now we'll conclude things we started with a coach of the year. Now we're going to finish with a coach of the year. And I don't know about you, Nate. This was the toughest decision for me. Girls coach of the year. So many quality candidates. Uh, you had teams like Pavilion and even Letchworth that came out of nowhere. You had teams like Elba and Pembroke who repeated as champions. But when it comes down to it, when the chips fell, we both agreed. Coach Ron Funky. For Coach of the Year, led Pembroke to the first back-to-back championship in Pembroke basketball history, uh, and and he he's been around for a long time, uh, Coach Funky, and it, it took him a while to find this level of success, but he's found it and he's made the most out of it with this team of seniors and back-to-back championships. I mean, it speaks for itself, really. Yeah, I think we're getting a little complacent with Coach Tom Redman winning yeah. every year. So, yeah. you know, sorry, Tom, but, I mean, maybe take a year off and then come <laughs> back and, you know, but, no, you're right. You know, what Coach Funky's done with that program is is outstanding. I know he took a few years off a number of years ago when his wife got sick and Michael Wilson kind of kept that program he even going. even coached but, boys basketball for a couple of years at one point. Yep, and, and but you're right. The last number of years, they've really taken a step up you know, and people don't think of Pembroke very much because they're really on the outskirts of Section 5, and he's kind of really brought that program into prominence. And, you know, they only had the one loss this year, and like we said before, who knows what would have happened. And, you know, and he's another one. He was getting ready to do it again in the, the, the spring with the softball team, and but you never know what's going to happen with that. But you're right. I mean, it was a tough choice with all, you know, we could have, just looked at Pavilion and Coach Schwanny Broughton and, and what they were able to do after an eight-game losing streak in the middle of the yeah. year to win a sectional title. And, you know, he could have could have looked at Letchworth and, you know, what they were able to do and, and Coach Grasso. But, you know, when it comes down to it, Funky was the man. So congrats yeah. to him. Congratulations to Coach Funky. Congratulations to all of our Fab Five selections. Be sure to tune in uh, this coming week for a little bit of a feature in in the daily news in print on each of these athletes as well as photos and perhaps even an interview uh, show 
coming up next week as well, but that all remains to be seen. So, Nate, another great show. Uh, finish it off with the excitement of announcing our Fab Five teams, but once again, it's time to say goodbye, and thank you for joining us for another episode of Inside High School Sports, which is brought to you by the Tonawana Valley Federal Credit Union. We'll see you next week.